Welcome back, Mountaintop, and our e-church family and friends around the world. So glad, again, you took time out of your Wednesday to spend some time with us. I pray that you have been walking through these lessons with us and enjoying some of this word and going back and look, listening to it again as we build our case and build our momentum in this wonderful book of Hosea. Some spotted places I want to pull out. Pray that it's, again, being a blessing to you. Let's pray tonight and we'll get started. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your grace. You allow us to come again to share your word. I pray, God, that as it goes forth tonight, that it be a blessing to those that are listening and those that will hear it sometime throughout the course of this year or sometimes without the course of their time. I pray this message will heal, strengthen, and deliver. Bless those that are bereaved, those that are sick and shut in. Give healing and give comfort in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's get into the word of the Lord tonight. I want to go back uh, a little bit further in the book of second chapter of Hosea. We left off in the 16th verse and he has promised to become our husband. But now we move on <clears throat> into the lesson of the Lord of love. And I want you to see in Hosea, the second chapter, in verse 19 is probably where we'll be focused in tonight. But I want to read 20 also just to bring it into a harmony there. And he says here in the New Living Translation of the book of Hosea, the second chapter in verse 19, he says, I will make you my wife forever, showing you righteousness, justice, unfailing love, and compassion. Isn't it beautiful just to hear the harmony of those vows he is going to be given later on as we go further in the lessons? Um, he's going to give these loud vows of betrothed, our promise to her. And I'm going to do this, he says, in faithfulness. He says, and I will be faithful to you and make you mine, in verse 20 of Hosea 2, and you will be, um, uh, you, you will fully know me as Lord. You will be fully know me as Lord. Um, he's going to show his covenant in these wedding vows that he's speaking here in Hosea, the second chapter from verse uh, uh, 19, 20 down to verse 23 to the end of that chapter, there's, there's a poetic song in those words that he's speaking of, uh, of wedding vows. But tonight in verse 19, he talks about as renewing this covenant of a wedding uh, vows or wedding, renewing this covenant of relationship, it characterizes and stands for um, fair treatment of love unfailing tenderness and security that he's going to give his wife, uh, Gomar. He did not love us or love them because they were lovely. Remember, they had gone and become adulterous spiritually and became I uh, idols to uh, serve to uh, idol things. And Gomar, being there in a prostitute, had gone out to do her own thing because I still loved her. And I like this story because uh, I told you a couple of weeks ago, a lot of people would see um, the church as, uh, as you come in in your various levels, well, I did this, but I didn't do that. I did that, but I didn't do this. Uh, I wasn't as ratchet, I think is the word, excuse me, to get around too many of these, these millennials and Gen Zs um, and alphas. I wasn't as bad as this person, but I, I wasn't as good as, as that person. It does not matter the symptoms of your sins that you measure by and the acting out of things that the carnal man desires. Those are just the symptoms, but the root is we rebelled against God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We cannot measure up to heaven's demands, which were living out the law. So don't ever get caught up in the church, not giving license that we continue in anything that's pulling us away from God. We should strive to do things that is pulling us closer to God. It, it, it scares us sometimes to realize the things that are desires that are that is in our flesh um, and what it, its appetite is, how big its appetite is. But thank God for the Holy Ghost that he's able to constrain us and pull us back. So we did not love him. It was not because we were lovely is what I was trying to say. But even their mother in Hosea 2 and 5, he talks about their mother was unfaithful. Um, and so it just falls on down through the lineage. But God loves us. First John 4 and 10 says it like this. He said, this is, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a sacrifice and to take away our sins. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Um, um, you're going to know me. 
and you're going to know that I love you, and you're going to know that I promise to look out for you. But love has to just be more than talk. Love has to be actions and doing. And Christ did that for us. God did that for us. He sacrificed and took away our sins, took away our sins through his death and his, on the cross and by his blood. He betrothed uh, you. Uh, I will betroth you to me forever. Betroth means promise you to me. He says, I will do this to you, and you will betroth yourself to me. And this promise is, is, to, is reciprocal. It's, it's, a, it's a prospect of marriage. I promise to marry her. I promise to marry him. I'm not looking for another. I'm not buying three wedding rings and see how many fingers I can put them on. I'm looking for one. And Christ is looking for you. And we're not just, we're many, but we're one body. And he wants to marry us. It's our business to make sure that we are looking for him as he is looking for us. Uh, don't make promises that you can't keep. Uh, I've had and I've seen in pastoring that many people get engaged and that's about as far as it go because things happen along the way and other things have become noted and it just didn't work out. But the promise was no matter what, we're going to get together and it didn't work out that way. Sometimes uh, too much is given too fast. Uh, too many promises are given that cannot be kept up. And from some people walk on into it saying, well, I got to do it because I promise. Uh, um, I got to do right by this girl. I got to write that by this person. Um, don't mess up people's lives trying to make promises that you, you can't keep. Write checks you can't cash. God is not like that. He is a faithful God. If he promised it, he will do it and he will make it good. Look what he says to us tonight as we build this lesson in Hosea 2 and 19. I'm gonna do it in righteousness, in justice, in loving kindness and mercy. These are the matters of conditions of the character of his real love. These are the conditions of the character of his real love. Righteousness, Romans 3 and 5, God presented Christ as the sacrifice or atonement or perpetuation through the shed blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, Romans 3, 25, because of his forbearance or tolerance or long suffering. He had let sin, he had left sin committed before, he had lifted sins committed beforehand and, and unpunished. The things that were on our lives when we came to him, the blood of Jesus Christ lifted it off of us. He did right by me. He did right by you. We should be still paying for the penalties of the things that we did, but Jesus lifts those things off of us and removes them away. Now, don't get the, get the teaching wrong that if I know I've already committed a, a felony and a legal crime, and I'm thinking now that I got saved, I'm gonna avoid the courts and come to church. No, those things have to be taken care of, however, Mama said he's a lawyer in the courtroom and a doctor in the sick room. God can turn around and change that sentence that should have been a life sentence and turn it in just to a few months, but time served. Or he can dismiss it all together. His love for us removes, eradicates the sin nature of it out of our lives and off of our lives. Jesus is a sacrifice for our sins. People are made right before God because of his righteousness. It's not my righteousness, but it's his righteousness. Injustice, 1 John 2 and 2, he himself is sacrifice and the atones for our sins, 1 John 2 and 2. And not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. That's justice. He justified us freely. To be trustworthy is a person of justice. You have to be trustworthy to, to be a just person. And only God is the just and the justifier and the just savior. He is righteous and he is just. He does judgment right. Loving kindness, with that he drew us. He redeemed us by his love. Righteousness and justice and loving kindness, he drew us to him. That in the age to come, we might know the riches of his kindness, Ephesians 2, 7 and 8. In the times to come, we'll know the riches of his kindness towards us that's in Christ Jesus. For he had united us together with Christ. Isn't that a blessing to know that, again, we were so far away, but now he's bringing us in 
marrying us as it, and, and becoming our husband. Now he has given us a vows of commitment that he's going to do right by us. He's going to be just by us, and he's going to do this in mercy. His mercy is so manifested. Many ways you can see his mercy. Every morning you wake up, new mercies of his love. We see, Paul says in Ephesians 2 and 7, he said, it says his riches of his grace freely bestowed upon us. That's mercy. When his rich grace can just be freely given to us, don't deserve it, but this love and unmerited favor is given to us. For this God we serve, we say yes and amen. We say praise and thanksgiving because he is the Lord of love, Lord of love. The Father's love is seen so clearly in, in a quickly uh, 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 a topical setting, and the Lord of love in uh, Luke's gospel, the 15th chapter, and verse 22 to 24, talk about the wasteful son, the, the spender, uh, that, that the father yet bestowed love back upon him. He came home to his father's house after he'd been out squandering his life away. Like many of you that I'm talking to tonight that might be listening to this and have not come back home yet, I want to reintroduce you to the Lord of love to come back into that relationship with him. This young man had gone out in Luke's gospel, the 15th chapter in verse, verses 22 down to verse 24 therein. And the father said, bring out the best robe. He says, I want the best for him. You see how much deep that love is? He says, it's a marvelous thing to best be able to come back home. But he said, I want the king's robe. It has to be the best robe. He said, put a ring on his finger. He said, I want to put some shoes on his feet, kill the best calf that we have. Let's get ready to party. Because my son that was dead is yet alive and he has made his way back home. That's a picture of the Lord of love. Some of you are probably hearing this lesson for the first time and did not really grasp the fact of how much the Lord loves you. Some of you are saved, walking with the Lord, faithful church members, but because of the struggles within, you feel that God doesn't care about you, he doesn't love you. Yes, he does. And he's gonna work with you and pull you through and build you up and get you through whatever is hitting or fighting against you. He loves you and he loves me. His mercy is forever enduring. He is the God of love. He promised us, I want to marry her. Could have chose anybody else. I want to marry him. That's the love that cannot be taken back or changed. His mercy is consistent. It's powerful. It endures forever. It yields love. It never fails. Paul fully explains to us about this love because we have it. He says, brothers and sisters, then let's present our bodies a living sacrifice to God, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable, our small part of our service. If he loves me and he's died for me, then it should be easy for me to serve him. You seem like it's a less of a strain loving, serving someone that loves you and cares for you. You can easily yield yourself to him, Romans 1, which is our 12, which is our reasonable service. Faithfulness, he promised to be faithful to this union. He says, I'll be faithful to you. The promise of faithfulness in the union is not given unto me, I promise, but his promise is greater than mine. The purpose of this union and the faithfulness of it is on his part, not on mine. I wouldn't know how to love him if he didn't teach me how to love him. I would, know how to be, would not know how to be faithful if he did not teach me how to be faithful. His covenant cannot be broken if he said he's going to be faithful. According to Psalms 89 and 34, the covenant will not be broken. I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I said. If I promise to be faithful to you, I'm going to be faithful all the way through. I cannot break my promise. He so loves us, and that should build your faith and confidence and strength tonight to know that I'm in love with Jesus, and I'm glad about it. Numbers 23, 19, he says that, he says, I am not a man that I should lie. If I spoke it, I'm going to make it good. Aren't you glad that God keeps his promises? They are yes and amen to the glory of God. 
What a comfort to know, a comforting spirit to know that his promises are there for us. When I'm weak and frail and feeling defeated and overwhelmed, I'm confident that God loves me. The floods of life are hitting me. The worries of life and concerns are coming after me. Doubt and fears are flooding my mind, but I can sit and rest in the fact that God loves me and he loves you and he cares about us, even in the wilderness that he brought us out of. And now walking through this present wilderness, God loves me. His goodness, his mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Yes, you must remember this, that God is faithful and he is faithful also to perform. He is the Lord of love. Romans helps us out in eight and verse 35 and down through the other texts. He says, trouble are calamities, our persecution, hunger, distress, our danger, our threats with death. In that New Living Translation, with all these things bombardingly coming at you, Paul is building the Roman church and letting us here tonight in Romans 8 and 35. And in the in New Living Translation, when trouble and calamities, persecution and hunger and distress comes after you, you must remember even the threats of death, God loves you. He says it in verse 37 and 39 of Romans 8, he says, despite all these things that overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. You hear that? Despite all these things, the overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. And I am confident that nothing, Romans 8, 37, 38, 39, that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, demons, neither fears for today or worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. No power in the sky above, no powers in the earth below. Indeed, nothing created or nothing coming can separate us from the, love, the Lord of love. He loves us, he cares about us, and he gave his life to prove it, and now he's gonna care for us. I want you to sink your minds and put your spirits back into this lesson again. You didn't marry a broke husband. Mm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You did not wear, marry a weak man. You married the all-sufficient, omnipotent God. You did not connect with someone that promised and write checks that they can't keep. He is a faithful God. He is a promise keeper and he cares about you and I. He is a protector. Let him be your husband. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your Lord of love. And I want you to walk into this new season with him as you go throughout the rest of this year. I don't care how stressful it may be. Lean back on your Lord's shoulder. Rest in the bosom of his love and know that he already has a plan. Read the text again. If I gave you vineyards in a wilderness and I sustained you in a barren place, surely now I can promise you something even greater and it's coming. Father, we bless you tonight. Thank you for this word. I pray that it sets in our hearts and we are experiencing this new wave and wind of your love. We are coming back to you with a greater love for you and a more hunger for you. Thank you for loving us when we were altogether unlovely. Thank you for keeping us and putting up with us and building us. Now strengthen us as we go forward. Never take your hands off of us. Keep us close to you and only put around me people that are loving and kind so I can experience your love and share that love with others. Protect me, guard my heart. Let me not be vulnerable to the sway in the minds of men, but let me filter my love through you. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, I pray you enjoyed this lesson. Short in its brevity, I'm purposely making sure you take time to juicy eat on it and feed on it. He's promised to be faithful. When we're foolish, he still loves us. Not to remain foolish, but to bring us back in covenant with him. God bless you. We love you. See you real soon.